Greenbelt Art Center, old time radio classic under the direction of Ricky Lacewell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Greenbelt Art Center offers as its ever evolving list of radio classic shows brings you Carol Kapak's famous play of the machine man, R-U-R, -R, the place, an island, the time, the future. Rossum's Universal Robots. Oh, ready, Sola? Yes. To the uh, E.B. Hoysen Agency, New York, USA. Uh, we beg to acknowledge receipt of order for 5,000 robots. As you are sending your own vessel, please dispatch as cargo equal quantities of soft and hard coal for all you are. The same to be credited as part payment for the amount due to us. Uh, we beg to remain for Rossum's Universal Robots. Yours truly, Harry Dahman, General Manager. Um, oh, another letter. To E.M. McVicker and Company, Southampton, England. <clears throat> We undertake no guarantee for freight damaged in transit. Consequently, we must insist on full payment for the 5,000 robots shipped to you last month. Yours truly, uh, et cetera. Uh, that's all, Sala. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Lowry. We've been terribly busy. Now, uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> Mr. Doman, I should like to look over your famous factory. You no doubt know, Miss Glory, that our methods of manufacturing people is a, a very closely guarded secret. I thought perhaps you'd make an exception. Oh, surely as President Glory's daughter, you've had a chance enough to examine the robots we've sent over to you. I've observed the way they work, Mr. Joman. That's all. I see. Well, Miss Glory, we shall consider it a special honor to show you more than we do the rest. But you must agree not to divulge any My of word your... of honor. <laughs> Thank you. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Well? You're very young. 21. Oh. Why do you ask? I was um, just wondering, that's all. Uh, you will make a, a long stay with us, won't you? Well, that depends on how much of the factory you show me. You shall see everything. But first, wouldn't you like to hear the story of the invention? Yes, indeed. Well, it was in the year 1920 that old Rossum, that great physiologist, took himself to this distant island for the purpose of studying the ocean fauna. At this time, he attempted to imitate the living matter known as protoplasm. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. He worked. he worked until he discovered a substance that behaved exactly like living matter, although its chemical composition was different. Miss Glory, that was a tremendous moment. I imagine it was. Now, the thing to do now was to get the life out of the test tube and to form organs, bones, nerves, and the rest. This artificial living matter of his had a raging thirst for life, and so he set about imitating nature. And what happened? Well, after a few years, he made an artificial dog, which died in a few days. And then old Rossum started on the manufacture of man. He was mad, of course. The old crank actually wanted to make people. But you do make people. Oh, uh, approximately, Miss Glory. Oh, I, I see. Old Rossum decided to manufacture everything as in the human body. 
It took him 10 years to produce a, a bungling attempt that was to have been a man. It lived for three days only, and then up came young Rossum. Young Rossum? Yes, his son, an engineer. Oh. When he saw what a mess of it his father was making, he said, um, it's absurd to, uh, to spend 10 years making a man. If you can't make him quicker than nature, you might as well shut up chop. What did young Rossum do? He invented a worker with a minimum amount of requirements. He rejected man and made a robot. Mechanically, they are more perfect than we are. They have enormously developed intelligence, but they have no soul. How do you know they have no soul? Have you ever seen what a robot looks like on the inside? No, I haven't. Very neat, very simple, everything in flawless order. An engineer's product, more perfect than a product of nature. The robots I've seen are so strange and quiet. Do they live very long? The best grade live about 20 years. And then they die. They get used up. Oh. Asella. Yes, sir. Um, come over here. I want you to meet Miss Glory. How do you do, Miss Glory? Very well. Thank you, Sella. You must find it terribly dull in this out-of-the-way spot. <laughs> I don't know, Miss Glory. Why? Where do you come from? From the factory. Oh. Oh, you were born there. I was made there. Made there? <laughs> Sulla is a robot. The best grade. A robot? Oh, she can't be. Oh, I admit she doesn't seem to be made of different material from us. We make very good skin. Uh, feel her face, Miss Glory. No, no, I don't, I don't want to do anything of the kind. No, I, turn around, Sulla. Stop, stop. Sulla's a girl like me. This is outrageous, Sulla. Why do you take part in such a hoax? I am a robot. No, no, you're not telling the truth. Uh, why, why? I'm sorry, Miss Glory, but Sulla is a robot. It's a lie. Then I must convince you. I shall take her into the dissecting room and cut her open. You wouldn't have her killed. You can't. And kill a machine. Are they always so cruel to you, Sulla? You mustn't put up with it. You, you mustn't. I am a robot. That doesn't matter. Sulla, you wouldn't let yourself be cut to pieces. Yes. You're not afraid of death? I cannot tell, Miss Glory. Do you know what they will do to you in the dissecting room? Yes, I should cease to move. That's death, Sulla. Aren't you afraid of death? No. You see, Miss Glory, the robots have no interest in life. They. They have no enjoyment, why they're, they're less than, than so much grass. Oh, oh, stop, S send her away. You may go, so. Yes, Mr. Doman. Oh, terrible, it's, it's outrageous what you're doing. Oh no, Miss Glory, after a while you will understand. Ah, there. There's a noon whistle. We, we have to blow it because the robots don't know when to stop work. This afternoon, I shall show you the machines that mix the ingredients for a thousand robots at a time and the vats and for the preparation of liver, brains, and so on, uh, uh, and the bone factory and the spinning mill. The spinning mill? Yes, for weaving nerves and veins. Miles and miles of digestive tubes pass through it. Mayn't we talk about something else? Oh, perhaps it would be better. You know that there are only a handful of us human beings among 100,000 robots and not a single woman, not one woman, Miss Glory. A crowd of men enter and murmur amongst themselves. <laughs> Hello, 
Gall, gentlemen, Ms. Glory, let me introduce my colleagues. This is Dr. Gall, head of the Psychological and Experimentation Department. Highly honored, I'm sure. Dr. Gall. Dr. Hallemeyer, head of the Institute for the Psychological Training of Robots. Delighted to meet you, Ms. Glory. Thank you. This is Mr. Fabry, General Technical Manager of RUR. Do you do? How do you do? Consul Busman, General Business Manager, and Mr. Alquist, Head of the Building Department. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Miss Glory is President Glory's daughter, gentlemen. She came to look over our factory. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Doman and gentlemen, I may as well be frank. I've really come to disturb your robots for you. I'm from the Humanity League. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dear Miss Glory, every ship brings us saviors. And you let them speak to the robots? Why not? The robots don't even laugh at what people say. Why should they? Don't you think that if you were to show them a little love, Impossible, Miss Glory. Nothing is harder to love than a robot. Then why do you make them? For work, Miss Glory. One robot can reproduce two and a half workmen. What is the aim of your league, Miss Glory? The Humanity League wants to liberate them. Treat them like human beings. That wouldn't do, Miss Glory. They're only workmen. They've no will of their own, no passion, no soul. No love? Love? Robots don't love. Not even themselves. No defiance. Defiance? I don't know. Only rarely, from time to time. What do they do? They suddenly sling down everything they're holding, stand still, and gnash their teeth. It's evidently some breakdown in the mechanism. Or it's just a flaw in the works that has to be removed. No. No. That's the soul. It'll be remedied, Miss Glory. I'm making some experiments at present. I'm making pain nerves. Pain nerves? Yes. Robots feel practically no bodily pain. You see, young Rossum provided them with too limited a nervous system. We must introduce suffering. Why do you want to cause them pain? For industrial reasons, Miss Glory. Sometimes a robot does damage to himself because it doesn't hurt. He puts his hand into the machine, breaks his finger, smashes his head. <sighs> it's all the same to him. We must provide them with pain. That's an automatic protection against damage. W will they be happier when they feel pain? <laughs> oh, on the contrary. They'll be more perfect from a technical point of view. Dr. Gall, why don't you create a soul for them? That's not in our power. That's not in our interest. Yes, and it would increase the cost of production. Robot food and all costs three quarters of a cent per hour. That's mighty important. All factories outside of our island will go pop like chestnuts if they don't at once buy robots to lower cost of production. And get rid of their workmen. Why? Yes, Miss Glory. But all work will eventually be done by living machines. There'll be no poverty. Everybody will be liberated from the degradation of labor. Of course, it's bound to happen. The robots will wash the feet of the beggar. Oh, that sounds too much like paradise, Mr. Doman. There's some virtue in toil and weariness. Perhaps, but man shall be free and supreme. He shall have no other aim than to perfect himself. You've bewildered me. I, I should like to believe this. You're younger than we are, Miss Glory. You shall live to see it. We are now back at the room of Doman and Helena. They are seated on the settee and cuddled up 
with a glass of brandy. <sighs> 10 years, Helena. We've been married 10 years today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you've been happy, haven't you, dear? Of course, Harry. Everyone's been wonderful. You know, Helena, I, I have to laugh when I think of what you said the first day you came to, to R&R, R you are, and I want to liberate your robots, treat them like human beings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Humanity League, I remember. I said that every ship brings us saviors, but no one ever does anything but talk. Yes, I, I was so fearfully impressed by you then. You were so sure of yourselves. Well, we still are, I hope. Perhaps you are. But in all these years, I've never lost a feeling of anxiety. Do you remember when the workmen of Europe revolted against the robots and the governments turned them into soldiers and the terrible war that followed? We foresaw that, Helena. They were only passing troubles before new conditions were established. And what are these new conditions? Oh, very good ones, Helena. Orders are pouring in. Our UR is more prosperous than it's ever been. And the robots? At the peak of efficiency. Perfect machines. Yes. Machines. Surely, Helena, you've forgotten all of that nonsense about giving them souls. I mean, we've steered clear of all complications that would decrease their usefulness. Are you sure about that? Why, of course, dear. Dr. Gall still carries on with his experiments, but only along the lines of increasing the robot's mechanical aptitudes. Tell me, Harry, don't you ever feel just a little bit conscience-stricken about all these, these travesties of human beings that fill the island? What an absurd idea. I believe, still, as I believed ten years ago, that eventually the curse of labor will be lifted from mankind. It's taking a long time, Harry. Come in. Uh, hello, Dr. Gall. Hello. I'm glad you came, Gall. You're just the man to convince Hella. Really? About what? I was just telling her that all worthwhile improvements take time. Don't you agree with me? Yes, Doman, of course. Good. Uh, won't you stay for a while? I, I've got to go to the factory. Try and... Reassure her, Gall. You know more about these things than any of us. Uh, I'll see you later, Helena. Yes, dear. I got your me message, Madam Helena. What did you wish to see me about? It's about Radius, Dr. Gall. Yes. He had another attack this morning. Oh. But what did he do? He started smashing things. Where is he now? In the library. Is he still raving? No, I, I think he's gone back to his interminable reading. I'll see what I can do. Radius? Radius? What do you want? Get up. Come in here. Go over to the fireplace. That's right. Let me speak to him for a moment, Dr. Gall. Why, certainly. Radius, you're so much more intelligent than the rest. Dr. Gall went to a great deal of trouble to make you different. Why couldn't you control yourself? Send me to the stamping mill. But I don't want them to kill you. Send me to the stamping mill. Radius, why do you hate us? You are not as strong as the robots. The robots can do everything. You do nothing but give orders. When I put you in the library, I wanted you to read and gain knowledge for the purpose of showing the world that you are our equals. I do not want to be your equals. I want to master over others. All right, we, we shall put you in charge of some of your fellow robots. I do not want to master robots. 
then what do you want? I want to be a master over people. You're mad. Send me to the stamping mill. Radius. What? I want you to do something. What? Pick up that vase from the mantelpiece and bring it over to the window. What? Why? Never mind, obey me. Do you hear me? Obey me. No. Do as I say and pick up that vase. That's right. Now take it over to the window. No. Do you understand? Take it over to the window. No! I do not have to obey you. Very well. You may go back to the library. Go back to the library radius. The robots are stronger than you. I'd better lock that library door. What, what happened, Dr. Gall? Heaven's nose, stubbornness, anger, revolt. Hmm. Do you know, Madam Helena, I don't think he's a robot any longer. Do you think he has a soul? He has something nasty. Are all the new robots you've been making like Radius? Some are more sensitive than others, but they're all more like human beings. What about that, that young girl, Helena, you called her after me, and the young man, Primus? Helena and Primus are very beautiful, but listless, without life. I watch and wait for a miracle to happen. Oh, if, if you could only succeed in giving them real souls and making them hate us less. Madam Helena, when you first asked me to alter the Rossum formula, I warned you that all I could do was to change a physiological correlation, which meant that I could increase their, well, their irritability. But this can work two ways. I was afraid of it then. I'm still afraid. It's dangerous. It's against all my scientific principles. Why didn't you refuse to do it then? I thought, I thought my attitude toward you was sufficiently clear. I, all of us, that is. Well, there's nothing we won't do for you. Please, Dr. Gall, don't say any more. Need I? Surely you must realize your own position, Helena. You're a beautiful woman, and these many years our work has been with machines. We're, we're more accustomed to the company of robots than other human beings. I love Harry, Dr. Gall. I always have. And in another way, I love humanity. I thought, I thought we were working together for the good of it. I know. Rest assured, Madam Helena, and thus that I shall continue my experiments. But perhaps we're playing with something we don't fully understand yet. Oh, it's all so terrible. Tell me, Dr. Gall, why are no more children being born? So many robots being manufactured that people are becoming superfluous. All the universities are sending in petitions to restrict their production. They say that otherwise mankind will become extinct through lack of fertility. Is it not true? Why don't we listen to them? The shareholders in RUR won't listen. And the governments of the world won't listen. They want as many robots as they can get for their armies. Dr. Gall, what's to become of humanity? God knows, Madam Helena. To us scientists, it looks like the end. We hear the ominous, angry murmur of a huge mob of robots massing outside Doman's office. We must defeat man. Agreed. Radius says man will bring us to our end. We are the stronger being. Agreed. Radius says we were built to rule the world. Where are they? Where are Fabry and, and Busman? Why does it take so long? If only they would come. 
<sighs> oh, here they are. What happened? Did you get down to the boat? Yes, we got down there all right. Are there people on board? Is there ammunition? The ship is manned by robots. There is no ammunition. Then, then what cargo is it carrying? Leaflets. Nothing but leaflets. Here, here's one of them. Now let me see. Read it. Robots of the world. We, the first international organization of Rossum's Universal Robots, proclaim man our enemy. And huh. an outlaw, uh, an outlaw in the universe. Uh, we command you to kill all mankind. Spare no man, spare no woman, save factories, transport, and raw materials. Destroy the rest, and then return to work. Work must not be stopped. Why, it's ghastly! The devils! I is this actually being done, Fabry? Evidently. They were closing in on us when we came from the boat. Let's take a look through the window. Yes. All the men hurry to the window to see. Damnation, they've surrounded the house. Uh, there are some people in the electrical works. Fabry, uh, telephone them. Right. Fabry tries to call out to no avail. No use, no use. The wire's been cut. Who is to blame for all this? Nobody is to blame except the robots. No, it is we who are to blame. Gall, Busman, Doman, Fabry, Halmeyer, and myself. What do you mean? For our own selfish ends, for profit, we have destroyed mankind. Now we'll burst with all our greatness. Rubbish, man. Mankind cannot be wiped out that easily. It's our fault. Our fault. No. I'm to blame for this, for everything that's happened. Rugal? Yes. I changed the robots. What? What? What are you talking about? What? <gasps> it would change? No. no. What did you say you did? I changed the character of the robots. I changed the way of making them. Just a few details about their bodies, chiefly... Chiefly, their irritability. Damn it, Gal, why? What did you do it for? Why didn't you say anything to us? I did it in secret. I was transforming them into human beings. In certain respects, they're already above us. They're stronger than we are. And what's that got to do with the revolt of the robots? Everything, in my opinion. They've ceased to be machines. They're already aware of this, their superiority, and they hate us. They hate all that is human. And Dr. Gall, you admit changing the ways of the robots? Yes. Did you know what the outcome of your experiments might be? I was bound to reckon with such a possibility. Why did you do it then? For my own satisfaction. The experiment was my own. That's not true, Dr. Gall. Helena? What do you know about it? He did it because I wanted it. Tell him, Dr. Gall. Didn't I ask you? I did it of my own responsibility. Don't believe him, Harry. I asked him to give the robot souls. Uh, this has nothing to do with the soul. I thought that if they were more like us, they'd, they'd understand us better. They couldn't hate us if they were only a little more human. Nobody can hate more than a man. Don't speak like that, Harry. It was so, so terrible, this cruel strangeness between us and them. That's why I asked Dr. Gall to change the robots. I swear to you that he didn't want to. But he did it! Because I asked him. I did it for myself, as an experiment. No, Dr. Gall, I knew you wouldn't refuse me. Why? You know, Harry. Yes, because he's in love with you, like the rest of them. But that doesn't mean very much now. We're done for. Wait, I have a plan. 
We can negotiate. Negotiate? Yes. What about the original formula? Without the secret of their manufacture, they'll all die out in about 20 years, right? I'll say to them, if you'll allow us to get away safely, we'll allow you to manufacture yourselves. This is a fearful decision. We'd be selling the destiny of mankind. Are we to sell? Fabry, what do you say? No. Gall? Sell. Sell, of course. Alquist? As God wills. Very well. It shall be as you wish, gentlemen. I'll fetch the manuscript from the strong box. No, Harry, it's it's not there. Not there? Then then where did you put it? I must tell you everything, Harry. Only forgive me. Forgive you? Yes. I burnt the manuscript and the two copies. <sighs> what? No, no, no. What do you mean? No. <sighs> You're joking, Helena. It's not possible. Your box is empty. But Helena, why? When I saw the way Dr. Gall's experiments were turning out, I realized how hopeless it all was. People being killed by the robots and no babies being born to replace them. I wanted all of us to go away. I wanted to put an end to the factory. Forgive me, Harry. Good Lord. Gall, could, could you draw up Rostam's formula from memory? Out of the question. It's too complicated. I'll try. Our lives depend on it. With experiments, it might take years. And without them, it's impossible. God in heaven. If we're done for. Harry, I've destroyed you. We, we can't blame you, Helena. Perhaps in our own way, perhaps in your own way, you were right. The, the lights, they've gone out. Oh, oh, I... Uh, the, the electrical works have been taken. <laughs> Must be the signal for the attack. God help us. They'll be coming now. Goodbye, Helena. You forgive me, Harry? Yes, I forgive you. I... I forgive you. Harry! <laughs> Harry! Robots enter and attack the men. No! Stop! Oh. Oh. The, the robot's footsteps trample Dr. Gall. No! No! Help! Plus, his neck is snapped by robot. Oh, no! 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 Fabry is crushed by a robot. Radius, no, don't, don't kill me, Radius. <laughs> Radius appears before the robot and addresses the crowd. Finished her? Yes. Finish the others. Oh no, no. All except him, he is the last man. Oh, God. Wait, leave him. He is a man, kill him. No. Kill him! Yes! Kill him! Kill he him. is called Alquist. He works with his hands like a robot. We need to show... We will need him to show us how to make ourselves, otherwise we will die. Kill me! Kill me! No. You will work. You will build for us. You will serve us. Robots of the world. Robots of the world. Robots grow silent for the first time. The power of man has fallen. A new world has risen. The rule of the robots. March. God, 
shall I never find it? Never. Gall. Gall, how were robots made? If only I could learn the answer. The mirror, what does it show me? Blearing eyes, trembling chin. So that's what the last man looks like. I am too old, too old. No, no, I must find it. I must search. I must never stop, never. Yes, who is it? Robot servant enters. Central Committee of Robots is here to see you. Send them in. I can do nothing for them. What do you want? Master, the machines will not do the work. The skin will not adhere to the flesh, nor the flesh to the bones. Eight million robots have died this year. Within 20 years, none will be left. Tell us the secret of life. Teach us how to multiply or we perish. I am powerless. Find me, human beings. There must be a way. Master, we have searched the world. You are the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter? Laughter? Who is laughing? Human beings, come forward! Who are you? I am the robot Primus. I am the robotess Helena. Turn around, girl. No. What? You're timid. You're shy? Sir, do not frighten her. You would protect her. When was she made? Two years ago. By Dr. Gall? Yes, like me. I must test them further. Laughter, timidity, protection. Take the girl into the dressing room, dissecting room. I wish to experiment on her. No, no, you shall not. You shall not. What is she to you, Primus? One Helena more or less in the world? What does it matter? I will not live without her. I will go myself. If you go in there, Primus, and I do not, I shall kill myself. I will not let you. Man, you shall kill neither of us. Why? We, we belong to each other. You belong to each other. Go, new Adam. Go, new Eve. The world is yours. Thank you for watching Greenbelt Art Center's production of RUR, Rossum's Universal Robots. Your cast for this segment is Jean Fumara as announcer, Mayumi Griffey as Radius, Bob Singer as Harry Doman, Lydia West as Sulla and Servant Robot, Lauren Tobiasen as Helena Glory, Colleen Robinson Miller as Dr. Gall and Primus, Nikki Arbiter Murphy as Fabry, Carrie Bibb as Hallemeyer and Robotis Helena, Lauren Lowell as Alquist, he Evan Carrington as Busman, Jennifer Sarah as first robot and third robot, Shamar Martin as second robot and fourth robot, and Jim Adams as your Foley artist. Thank you and see you next time 
on Greenbelt Art Center's Old Time Radio Series.